Okay, during last lecture, during last lecture, we discussed about the uh, three memory management strategies. Actually, in this, the first one is no abstraction. No abstraction is nothing but um, no illusion between the operating system and the end user. Okay. So the, the application programs and the operating system in between that, there is no abstraction, no illusion. Okay, directly it is visible to the application programs. Whatever the operating system do, um, everything will be visible to the application programs. And in another point of view, we can say there is no multi-processing. That's why there is no memory abstraction. Please understand. Okay, if you understand, uh, it will be little easy for you when you uh, what when you write the concepts. Okay, uh, especially in uh, operating system and database management systems and all. Okay, otherwise, uh, like other theory subject, it is not like only remembering the points. It's not only remembering the points. It is very important. Uh, to remember the points, to recollect the points, you have to understand the uh, concepts, okay? But uh, I am not teaching the uh, uh, concepts very vastly also, very precisely, whichever is required, very important, only that I am teaching, okay? So, uh, if you listen, if you understand, you will not uh, get confusion, okay, when you study operating system. No memory abstraction is nothing but what? No multiprocessing system at all. There is no multiprocessing system. So there is no, no multiprocessing system. Then a single main memory will be lavishly used by a single process. So the entire main memory can be used by a single process. So there is no memory abstraction. Okay, that means one process at a time. Swapping and swapping is actually technique. Okay, the second technique is swapping. In swapping, we allowed multi here only one process, no, but here we allowed multiple processes. We allowed multiple processes, but as whole processes only, as whole program. Okay, so if one process comes, the process related entire program. The process related entire program will be uh, kept inside the main memory. Okay. If the programs are uh, moderate in size or small, we can keep more number of, we can keep more number of uh, programs inside the memory. But then also in multi-processing system, now in later uh, stage and all, now there are more number of multi-processing. Okay, in, a, in single multiprocessing system, there are more, more, more and more number of processes. So in that case, this is not efficient. Swapping is not efficient. Here, the entire program will be kept inside the main memory whenever a part of the program should be executed. Okay. So comparatively, very less number of programs we can keep, but we uh, could achieve the uh, multiprocessing. We could achieve multiprocessing because multiple processes can use the memory, no? Then multiple processes can execute it simultaneously. Okay, so that was possible when swapping was there. Okay, but if new process comes, if in swapping new process comes, that process related entire program should be bring to main memory. No, suppose memory is not sufficient. Then what we did, the existing uh, program in the main memory was removed and kept inside the secondary memory, which is disk. Okay, temporarily for time being, it will be there in the disk. And then the new uh, program will be uh, will brought will be brought into the uh, main memory. Like this swapping between the disk and the main memory happens, but uh, during the swapping, the entire program will either go from the main memory to disk or the entire program will come from disk to main memory. 
okay the entirety of the program is very important word here the entirety of the program will be bring into the memory and um bring out of the main memory okay so here there are so many fragmentation fragmentation means a fragmented free spaces overall uh, scatteredly inside the main memory okay so uh, we were needed to do the uh, compaction okay compaction is nothing but uh, keeping all the processes which are currently there in the main memory in one place either all the processes will go to the top of the main memory all the free spaces will be will come in the bottom of the main memory or all the main all the free spaces will go to the top of the main memory and all the active processes currently stored processes will come to the bottom of the main memory so after we did the compaction we will get uh, contiguous free memory space so if any new memory comes sorry any new process comes any new process comes that can occupy the memory because now free spaces are together no so that can occupy the if the size of the free memory is larger than the currently newly arrived process then it can be aram say what occupied in the main memory okay so that was the concept behind the swapping okay now this example i think you remember i explained for the swapping so first the memory was free process a came and then process b arrived so process b and a both could occupy it then process c came of course process c is size also lesser than the free available memory so that also got occupied but next the process d should come d should come where the process d now all the processes will be there in the will be there in the disk that means all the programs will be there in the disk of course from the disk only during the execution it will come to main memory okay so next the process d should be brought into the main memory but there was no space here no space because the available freely available space no that is lesser than the size of the d new process or new program we can say okay so we can't occupy here so that we uh, we swapped out we swapped out process a from main memory to disk okay now currently where process a process a is just temporarily being inside the disk okay um here you should not i am saying process but it it implies program remember program okay so now pro, pro, uh, this program a removed program a removed from the memory okay now the pro, d d can occupy the space of the a but still it creates some fragmented what free space okay but now what process a again it wants to be executed the program a part of the program a should be executed so again we have to bring back the process a to memory but there is no contiguous memory free memory to allocate program a here a small portion and here is here is also small portion of the memory is there. free memory is there so no way what we have to do we have to remove the process b okay so process b will be removed removed means what process b will be swapped out to the secondary memory process a will be swapped in to the main memory okay so that's what happened here okay after b left this was the space available and then a swapped in okay like this swapping between the swapping the complete program uh, complete entire program uh, into the main memory and out of the main memory uh, to execute the uh, part of the program is called the swapping okay in the swapping if you look at this there are fragments here they showed very less number of cells okay just for example but actual memory will not be like this 
there will be so many uh, in, after started one session of the multi programming sometime later if you look at the main memory there may there will be definitely many free memory fragmentation fragments will be there free memory fragments will be there here and there scatteredly not together okay so what we can do we can do compaction the operating system can do uh, compaction but du during the compaction the processor will be idle it cannot do any other task okay and at the same time to do the compaction of course the duration of doing compaction is completely depending on how many number of free segment fragments are there depending on that only but approximately if you uh, after some point of time definitely there will be more number of fragments okay uh, so uh, making uh, comp uh, do do doing the compaction will take more time or otherwise considerable amount of time will be taken to do compaction okay so that will degrade the performance of the processor that will degrade the performance of the processor so this technique though it supported the uh, multi processing it is not the um, efficient uh, technique this is not the efficient strategy okay so that was the until this we saw okay then uh oh uh, yes but in memory compaction they mentioned that it takes more time more time so it is not the um efficient technique okay before going into this i should say about the virtual memory that is the third one we discuss about no memory abstraction swapping okay in swapping there are uh, many free spaces scatteredly so to uh, keep all the free space free spaces together we perform compaction okay the swapping what you have to remember this entire this word you have to remember entire program okay and then virtual memory virtual memory is um nothing but uh, creating a memory in a in a secondary uh, storage device for example in disk allocating a portion of memory only to keep the process here not program it here you have to use the word process because in the swapping always the entire program will travel okay from wherever it goes and comes it will be entire program but in virtual memory what what is the drawback of uh, this at a time very less number of programs only can, can participate in a multi processing system okay but in a virtual memory concept came we splitted the programs into manageable or meaningful size okay we split the programs programs into manageable size um and then the um part of the those segments we split the single program into many segments no operating system split one every program into several segments okay non contiguously those segments will be stored in the main memory not sequentially okay it will be stored but the entire program will not be stored in the main memory there is a secondary memory okay but now the portion of the special secondary memory we have to call virtual memory okay so disk may there is a portion which is called virtual memory okay and main memory will be as it is okay now all the programs all the programs will be there of course will be there in the memory it will be there in the virtual memory now okay virtual where is the virtual memory portion it is there in the secondary memory so secondary memory may your portion is called the virtual memory in the virtual memory the complete pro it is a large memory okay 
so all the programs which are participating in a multi processing system at any instance of time will be there in the uh, virtual memory so complete program you can see in the virtual memory we have already splitted the program into many uh, we can say many pages or many segments because there are two different techniques will be used there are two different techniques will be used in the virtual memory one is called paging another one is called segmentation okay that's why i'm saying here the word the program can be splitted into pages or program can be splitted into segments okay program can be that is depending on the virtual memory technique we will discuss about that next class okay so assume that the entire program is uh, splitted into different segments all the segments that means the complete program in the form of the segments which is available in the virtual memory okay now whichever portion of the memory should be sorry whichever portion of the program should be currently executed only that segment underline only that segment or page that will differ just now i now i am taking uh, commonly segment okay only that segment of the program will come to the main memory not entire program underline not entire program entire program will not come into the main memory okay only a segment of the uh, program which will come from the main memory come sorry come to the main memory and that will be executed okay so that particular segments like this each and every process program is getting executed different programs ka sketch different segments will will be there in the main memory could you imagine in multi processing system there are many programs no so one program for example program 1 ka segment 3 program 2 ka segment 8 like that it will be you can see inside the main memory okay so now what more number of programs more number of processes can be executed same time because if you look at the main memory at any point of time in virtual memory any of the virtual memory uh, technique when comparing with the swapping more and more number of processes simultaneously can be executed okay but what happen the uh, what the transferring the uh, uh, segments between the uh, virtual memory and the main memory will happen very frequently because we did not keep the entire program inside the main uh, inside the main memory no so every program parts suppose in one stage assume that main memory is filled filled with many processes okay now new process comes only process comes no from the virtual memory only part of the program comes no come to the main memory so assume that new process comes but there is no space in the main memory okay so operating system will will remove any one of the processes which is currently there in a main memory okay to remove that particular process operating system will apply algorithms those algorithms are called page replacement algorithms page replacement algorithms okay please you have to understand the uh, scenario when the page replacement algorithm will be applied by the operating system okay we are talking about the virtual memory concept okay now in virtual memory may inside the main memory there are many processes underlying processes not programs okay so in one point of time the entire main memory will be completely filled with the processes okay of course that is a multi processing system so process may come process may leave okay assume that uh, in one point of time the complete main memory is filled with the processes but new process should be executed but there is no space to keep the process now the operating system should remove any one of the process from main memory operating system should remove any one of the process should main memory but based on what it will remove it cannot remove randomly any one of the process which is already there in the main memory okay 
because when it is apply when it is removing any one of the process it should see that immediately after removed the particular segment it should not be needed immediately okay then the traffic between the main memory and the disk will increase no so that factor the operating system should consider okay so by applying page replacement algorithm how to do the scheduling it apply scheduling algorithm like that to remove the page from the main memory and keep it in the disk it has to follow algorithm that algorithm is called the page replacement algorithm okay so by applying page replacement algorithm the process will remove the the operating system will remove any one of the process and the where the process will go the process will go to the disk okay from where it came that is very important the same location it will go okay so then the new process will be executed and in between any process after completing the execution it will be removed that time it will go to what it will not go to disk because the image of that process will be already there in the disk okay like that this kind of uh, memory management is called a virt virtual memory okay in the virtual memory only we were needed address space why address space because when you are keeping the entire program inside the memory it is not necessary that you have to what you have to provide a separate space for the process okay but when different one process is one program is splitted into many processes and a part of the process will come to the main memory then we have to allocate a separate space for a process not program okay so operating system will allocate newly whenever the pro new process is created address space will be created in the main memory okay so address space concepts will be used to only in the virtual memory not in swapping not in uh, uni processing system okay so this you have to remember this i just said there are two approaches where the multi processing is possible because no abstraction i removed no abstraction may there is no multi processing in swap and swapping and virtual memory may only multi processing is possible okay so this already we discussed okay next we are going to see about th that is also continuation of this see here what was the problem in swapping may what was the problem the problem is compaction okay compaction will degrade the performance so we want to keep the uh, these free space as it is we are not going to compact it okay we are not going to perform the compaction that means we are not going to put all the free memories together okay we are going to keep there only but when new process comes new process comes it should identify no it should know where exactly the empty plus uh, empty spaces are there okay so to manage these empty spaces to manage those fragmented empty spaces we have two free space management techniques free memory management techniques okay these are not simply memory management techniques okay these are free memory management techniques free memory management techniques how to keep track of free memory how to keep track of free memory okay there are two techniques one is called bitmaps another is called linked list remember these two techniques are used to, to keeping used to keep track of only free underline empty memory free memory okay okay but uh, you you are able to compare no the previously we studied three strategies okay those are what those strategies how in multi processing system the main memory will be managed in multi processing system how main memory main memory was managed it said about that strategy strategies those three uh, especially the two bit uh, swapping and uh, virtual memory they 
both the uh, strategies uh, discussed about how we in a multi processing system how we managed to uh, how our operating system managed to allocate the main memory to different uh, processes okay either keeping entire program or keeping process okay that's what we discussed there here what was the problem there there are many free memories fragmented free memories we couldn't manage that we thought of uh, making compaction but uh, it has strong drawback okay so that somehow we have to keep track of free memory available free memory so bitmap and linked list these two are techniques to manage the free space in main memory free space in main memory so first bitmap bitmap is very uh, simple technique okay in the bitmap the map, this this is the main memory assume that this is main memory and this portion is called this is also part of the main memory but this is called bitmap memory this portion of the main memory is called bit just ignore this okay this is a next technique this is a portion of the main memory but this is called a bitmap memory and this is the actual mem main memory where we store the data okay where the processes are stored the data okay so there are two portions now here in bitmap the memory here the memory is divided into allocation units these can you see here these are called the allocation units these units see the memory entire memory is split into fixed size units fixed size there is no variation between these um, units okay fixed size units okay these units are called allocation units these units are called allocation units these allocation units can be very small can be moderate in size or can be very large it is depending on the um, of course the operating system will decide the size of the allocation unit okay you may ask ma'am how the operating system will allocate the uh, allocation units based on what the size of the allocation unit would be uh, decided Uh, size of the allocation unit would be decided that we will discuss now okay little little later let me complete first what how in the bitmap memory has been managed okay so allocation unit deciding the size of the allocation unit is also a challenging uh, task for operating system okay because it can't allocate very large very small both are having its own limitation okay that we will discuss okay but now what we what you have to know the entire main memory will be splitted into fixed size units those units are called allocation units okay corresponding to each allocation unit corresponding to each and every allocation unit there is a single bit in a bitmap memory for example see here in the diagram shown this is one unit you know for that one bit in bitmap memory this is a second allocation unit this unit for this unit there is a single bit allocated to uh, allocated in bitmap memory okay like that in each and every memory allocation unit in a main memory there will be a single bit memory inside the uh, uh, bitmap memory inside the bitmap memory okay if the if the allocation unit If the allocation in this allocation unit, any program or any process is allocated, then that denotes one in a bitmap memory. Okay, if the that particular allocation unit is occupied, then that will be denoted by representing one in the respective bitmap of the bitmap memory. Okay, here this is a free space. this is a occupied one which who occupied this process a occupied this memory space here process b here process c d e f 
sorry not f is not there okay but these are called these are called free memory nothing got allocated till now in this okay now this technique is only used to manage the free memory keeping track of the free memory remember okay but the free memory is allocation you need to know that will be represented you uh, by zero in a bitmap memory okay zero in a zero in a bitmap memory okay so one denotes something occupied zero denotes it is free space so for this each and every allocation unit there will be a bit in a bitmap memory okay so zero denotes free that particular allocation unit is free memory one denotes it got occupied okay but this now like this we can manage the uh, free memory so now any new process comes it will only see the bitmap memory it will not see the large main memory it will see only the bitmap memory depending on, on the size of the new process for example assume that the bitmap memory the allocation unit know the size of the allocation unit is 1 uh, kb okay 1 kb is the size of the allocation unit okay suppose um uh, there is a process new process comes okay new process how it will perform the searching to allocate the a new process inside the main memory it will see the uh, bitmap memory okay in that bitmap memory assume that the new process size is 4 kb new process size is 4 kb okay so it will start to search if in the first attempt any attempt in searching anywhere the uh, consecutive four number of one comes sorry four number of zero comes four consecutive zero comes then it can occupy the the process can occupy the memory right can you understand newly arriving process size is what 4 kb okay one allocation unit size what i said 1 kb okay so in free memory four allocation units if in suppose in con consecutive uh, um, free memory may there are four allocation units are there that would be definitely represented here in the bitmap memory by what putting three zeros okay okay so like that the newly arrived process needs how many number of allocation units four allocation units why its size is 4 kb okay 4 kb so in as per our example it is how many allocation unit 4 kb equal to four different allocation units okay so consecutive four zeros where if if it comes then it will decide the new process the operating system will decide that a new process can be allocated okay so that process will be allocated in that particular free space where it found four consecutive zeros zeros only denotes the free space no so that will be allocated so searching is little dif difficult here searching is difficult and another one actually advantage of this bitmap keeping the free memory by following bitmap technique is it is very simple simple way to keep track of the memory okay but uh and searching also little when we are comparing with uh, sequential searching for example we don't have the bitmap memory then the searching will take more time no so considerably um this reduce the searching time also but the another technique which we are going to discuss no that is the advantages than this because that will reduce the search time uh considerably larger than the bitmap technique okay 
okay then what is the disadvantages disadvantage of bitmap memory the allocation unit deciding the size of the allocation unit is very challenging task why suppose very small units we are allocate operating system allocating as a allocation unit okay uh, for example one byte two byte two bytes and all that is very small no allocation unit size is very small if it decides the uh, if operating system decides allocation unit size as very small what is the what will be the disadvantage more number of bitmap memory is required to represent uh, all the allocation units that is right no for example now this is one allocation unit okay you are decreasing the size of the allocation unit this one allocation unit you are splitting into two okay like that every allocation unit one unit you will split into two units here what you are doing you are decreasing the size of the allocation unit okay if you decrease size of the allocation unit total number of allocation units in the memory will increase right it will increase so if it increase total number of allocation unit increases here total number of bits also increase okay total number of bits will also increase so uh, ultimately we what we need more big bitmap memory we need a big bitmap memory space okay so that is the drawback okay if we if operating system decides that it it has to what reduce the size of the bitmap memory assume that it is increasing the size of the allocation unit now assume now currently 2 kb is the size it is increasing to 4 kb that means assume that two allocation unit it is it's merging together to keep as one allocation unit okay so what will happen and total number of allocation unit will be decreased of course and of course there is a advantage also we can the operating system can reduce the bitmap memory memory space also but what will happen if remember the allocation unit size is big large okay if new process comes if new process comes for example assume that allocation unit size is 4 kb okay new process comes assume the new process um, size is 2 kb in one allocation unit may only half space it will occupy right so remaining half space will not be used by used for anything because ne next process comes it will see only the new allocation unit it will start from new allocation unit okay next assume that there is a process comes it is a 3 kb process that time what will happen in single allocation unit may 1 uh, kb will be wasted okay if the newly arriving process size is multiples of allocation unit size multiples for example here we assume the 4 kb is the size of the allocation unit newly pro arriving process size is 8 so 8 is multiple of 4 no multiples of 4 so you can exactly allocate the process but that will happen very rarely okay so when you choose very big allocation you need more number of space more number of space in the memory will be wasted getting it so that is a drawback so operating system should decide the size of the allocation unit should be uh, consistent to uh, what to overcome both the disadvantages okay what is the what are the disadvantages keeping the small allocation unit will increase and uh, increase the size of the bitmap memory keeping large size of uh, allocation unit will waste the internal space 
inside the allocation unit. Space inside the allocation unit. Okay. So these are the drawbacks. Next technique is called linked list. Linked list technique. Okay. In the linked list technique, what we are doing, every allocated process, every allocated uh, process will have um, what we can say, a separate unit of entry in a linked list. Okay. For example, now process A, here process A, for process A, one entry will come in a linked list. Okay. Linked list is nothing but uh, that is also like bitmap memory, but it will have list of items. List of items. Each and every list of item will be linked with the uh, neighbor uh, item, neighboring item. Okay, that's why it is called a linked list. But okay, it's not in the bits will not be there here. It is uh, uh, the list items will be there here. This and all know when you study data structure, there is a separate data structure is called a linked list. Okay, detail you will study in the data structure. Now you just understand here. Now, if you look at this memory, how many number of linked list entries are required? This is a occupied process. So one occupied process, one entry. Okay, the second one is a empty segment. Okay, for this empty segment, there is a separate entry in a linked list. So every process and every individual um, uh, free segment, there is a independent entry in the linked list. Okay, but what will be represented inside the entry? Look at the first entry. Look at the first item in the uh, first process in the uh, main memory. Okay. First, A is what? A is occupied. Okay. The sum process is stored inside the space. Okay. So now, how this will be uh, uh, this will be represented using the uh, uh, in entry in the linked list. This is a process, so it will start with P process. It is occupied. P denotes it's occupied. Okay. Zero is a starting address of that process. Starting address, assume that here it is zero. So this is the starting address of the list. Five is how many number of addresses? How many number of addresses are there? Independent units or addresses are there in the process. That means this process occupied how many number of independent memory units? Okay. So assume that this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. So how many units process A occupied? Five units. So this is the size of the process or size of the empty space. Okay. Here it is process. That's why it is size of the process. Five is the size of the process. Zero is a starting address of that process. Okay. Okay. Now, next, next is what in our main memory, next is free space. Free space is generally in operating system, it is called whole, whole, H-O-L-E, whole. Okay. So, next is whole in the main memory, next is whole. So, H, it is represented using H. Okay. Where this H starts, what is the starting address of this H? This is 0, 1, 2, sorry. This is zero starting from. So here where we left uh, uh, five, no. So this is five. One, two, three, four, five. So five is what address? So in fifth address, address five may which is starting the whole is starting. Okay. 
how many number of memory units the whole occupied 1 2 3 so that is 3 so size of the whole is 3 okay so the first entry is linked with the second entry second entry will be linked with the third entry what is the third entry third entry is again a process so p here so 8 is its starting address so it is given here size of process b is what 6 it is given here again next c is also process so process starting address size next h and then again another h okay and then uh and then process uh oh, one second this is process no this is process and then again process and then free o extra they have given uh, this is a memory space like that the linked list will be okay process whole and then process and then process and then whole process process whole they have given only right okay so like this it will be okay now when it is searching how it will search searching is very important after we apply the technique okay searching time should be considerably decreased searching time should be considerably decreased when searching should be done when new process comes when new process comes only the searching will be performed why when new process comes the searching should be performed because it has to find the uh, proper free space to keep the process new process okay that's why the searching is required okay so if any process should be stored usually in this method scanning will be done scanning okay starting from first it will say see that only it no need to see each and every bits like bitmap okay in bitmap what happened consecutive free spaces it has to find okay required number of consecutive free spaces it has to find okay but here it is not like that it will see process it can move because the first link is uh, list is linked with the second list okay second list is whole so it will see the size if the size suits that means the size is smaller than the uh, this size is bigger than okay this size is bigger than the new process then the process can be occupied suppose this size is smaller than the newly arrived process then this segment this segment free segment cannot be used it will see next that is a process then it will again process then again whole size of this whole is only 2 if it suits it will be allocated otherwise next jump like this the searching will happen but now i said the searching by taking one example but the searching will be taken place in many um days um okay one second let me finish then okay searching first let me finish then i will come to that okay now in searching there are four ways it can any one of the four ways the scanning i said scanning process no that is nothing but searching searching to find the suitable free space for the new process okay searching to find the suitable new uh, uh, so suitable uh, place storage place for a new process that is called the searching here for that it is searching okay that process is called scanning okay first we will see here they have given quick fit no there are actually four types of, of uh, searching technique 
one is called first fit it is not given here first first fit okay next one is called next fit first first fit second next fit third best fit fourth worst fit okay you just ignore this quick fit okay so next fit first fit next fit best fit quick fit is a worst fit i just replace this first fit in your book you can see first fit okay first fit next fit best fit worst fit what is that first we will see first fit okay in the first fit the searching will be now i said you know how i said in the scanning process to find the free space suitable free space uh, it will st uh, start to search from i am talking about first fit okay it will start to search from here start starting from the first uh, entry in the linked list okay then it will see that now this so process so next poll poll if suppose this this is not suitable assume this is not suitable then it will go and this will check this when this is not suitable here only uh, three is the size of the hole and here two kb this unit will differ based on the size of the memory we assume that this is three kb okay here three kb free space here two kb free space okay so it will leave this and then next process next process assume that next it is coming to uh, okay either three a yeah uh we assume that here four okay so the first fit to find that where it finds the first suitable free space where it this search now this current searching when it finds a suitable free space here only okay here the process will be allocated okay here the process will be allocated okay suppose during the searching it finds this is a suitable the first fit may first time itself to, during when it finds a first hole itself it suits the uh, suits suits for the program for the process then here itself in this hole itself the new process will be occupied so what this first fit algorithm says during searching to allocate the memory for free space when the searching finds a first suitable free space there the allocation will be done as soon as it finds a new suitable space space it will allocate the new process it will not proceed the searching further it will not proceed the searching further remember okay this is first fit very simple whenever the first hole is fit to the size of the new process it will be occupied there it will not it will not proceed searching and see compare other holes okay okay here what happens for example assume that newly process size is 1 kb newly process new process size is 1 kb so in this first it will see this hole here itself it will allocate what will happen three holes may uh, sorry three holes may in one hole it will allocate the new process two holes will be wasted okay this is first fit what is next fit in the next fit students you need a break you want break yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so 12:45 you can join now time is 12:31 12:45 you can join